This is the direct draw shake machine. To produce a quality shake, this machine must be cared for properly. In this program, we'll deal with closing procedures, which include disassembly or takedown and cleaning and sanitizing. Remember, proper maintenance means following these procedures faithfully every night. To properly close the direct draw shake machine, you'll need the proper cleaning equipment. This includes two sanitized buckets, a shake mix rerun can, the bucket support, and the cleaning brushes provided with this machine. Always use only these brushes for cleaning the machine. You'll use these part trays also. They've been provided to help you transport and dry the part. If any of the spaces in the parts tray are empty, when you're done closing, you'll have to find the missing parts. If even the smallest part is missing, the machine cannot be operated. Your first closing step is to turn off the rocker switches at the top of the machine. Off is the center switch position. Next, remove the door cover. First, lift it up, then pull it toward you from the bottom and let it drop. Now, lift it up and over the draw handles. There are lots of small parts, so be careful not to lose any. First, disconnect the syrup lines at the machine connection. We want to warn you that we mean the bottom syrup line connections. Never remove the other end until you have first removed this bottom connection. To disconnect the syrup lines at the bottom, pull back the outer sleeve on the quick disconnect coupler and simply pull it off. Now, go to the back of the machine. Open the bottom door and remove this funnel to make room for the bucket support. Put the bucket support into its fitting, like this. And hang an empty sanitized bucket on it. Now pull both mix suction hoses from the mix reservoir and put them into the bucket. Next, remove the syrup lines from the freezer doors by removing the round-headed locking pins. Then pull the syrup lines out. Remove the drip tray. You'll take it to the sink for cleaning and sanitizing. We'll cover cleaning at the sink at the end of this tape. Place a clean bucket under the draw valves and open both of them at the same time. You'll know when there's no longer any pressure in the freezing chamber because the mix will stop flowing. After the mix has stopped flowing, close the draw valves and repeat this process for the other chamber. When both chambers have been emptied, discard the small portion of syrup and mix. Then, rinse and sanitize the bucket. Next, put the clean, sanitized bucket back under the draw valves. Open both draw valves again, and this time, press the wash button. Let the shake mix flow from the freezing chamber into the bucket. After about two and a half minutes, the wash cycle will stop automatically. But if shake mix is still flowing from the freezing chamber, press the wash button again. When mix stops flowing from the freezing chamber, you can cancel the wash cycle by pressing the reset button. Pour the rerun mix into a clean, sanitized rerun can. And repeat the same procedures for the other freezing chamber. 
When you are done with this step, put the lid on the rerun bucket and store it in the walk-in cooler. But once a week, you should discard all the rerun. This breaks the bacteria chain. Otherwise, contaminants could just keep multiplying. Now, we're going to remove the torque rod. Lift up the rod until it's out of the torque rotor shaft and pull the bottom of the rod toward you until it clears. Then pull it down until the top is clear of the torque arm. Remove the torque rod from the other freezing chamber in exactly the same way. As you disassemble the machine for cleaning, be sure to put the parts in their proper places on the part trays. The next step is to sanitize the shake machine. Using a clean, sanitized bucket, fill the bucket hanging on the bucket support with two gallons of clean water. Then put the empty bucket that you used to bring the water under the draw valves. Push the torque rotor shaft in as far as it'll go. Open the draw valves and press the wash button. Leave both draw valves open for the remainder of the wash cycle. When all the water is drained from the freezing chamber, close both draw valves and empty the bucket. Now, mix a bucket of sanitizer detergent solution. Next, repeat the entire wash cycle, this time using two gallons of the sanitizing solution. But remember, don't open the draw valves until sanitizing solution starts to flow from the torque rotor shaft bleed ports. When it does, then open the draw valves and allow the sanitizing solution to drain. Repeat the same procedures for the other chamber. After you've taken care of both chambers, remove the dispensing nozzle caps by pulling down on the side tab. Then. Remove the draw valve handles from the freezer door by simply pulling the locking pin out and lifting the handles off. If only three flavors are used, be sure to remove the locking pin from the base of the fourth flavor draw valve handle. Now, remove the spindles by lifting the sleeve on the coupler and pulling the shaft down from the bottom until it clears the freezer door. Put the spindles on the parts tray. Next, remove the draw valve core by simply pushing it down and out the bottom of the freezer door with your finger. Then you remove the freezer door by unscrewing the four door fasteners. Be very careful not to drop it. The freezer door is plastic and it will shatter. The next step is to pull the torque rotor shaft out of the freezing chamber and check the rear of the shaft to see if the bearing is there. If it's not, it's at the end of the drive shaft. Now rotate the beater assembly until the front scraper blade is at the top. Carefully pull the assembly out until the front blade has cleared the chamber and lift the blade off. Rotate the assembly again until the rear blade is at the top. Pull the assembly all the way out and remove the rear scraper blade. Now reach into the chamber and pull straight out on the drive shaft. If the torque rotor shaft bearing was not on the torque rotor shaft, it will be in the drive shaft. To remove it, insert the torque rod into the side hole of the drive shaft and push the bearing forward. And of course, repeat the freezing chamber disassembly for the other side. When both chambers have been disassembled, open the side access door and turn off the mixed reservoir refrigeration system by moving the switch to the center position. Next, take out the drip tray. Then, remove the mixed level sensing probe by pulling the probe housing straight out from the machine. Lift it up out of the mixed reservoir and carefully place it on the parts tray for cleaning. 
The next step is to remove the air mix pump. To do this, remove the locking pin located in the upper half of the collar by pulling it straight out. Then pull the collar down and tilt the top of the pump toward you. Slide the collar off the top and unscrew the pressure line from the pump. Then remove the pump assembly from the machine. Remove the mixed suction hose assembly by taking out the keeper pin at the bottom of the pump and pulling the assembly straight out. Next, reach into the mix holding cabinet and disconnect the mix pressure line from its fitting. Then, repeat the same procedures on the other side. After you've completed the other side, take out the mix reservoir. Pour the mix into a clean, sanitized rerun bucket with a cover. You'll store it in the walk-in cooler. Your next step is to wash and sanitize the permanent refrigerated mix tube leading to the freezing chamber. You'll use the special brush provided and warm sanitizing solution. At the same time, clean and sanitize the inside of the refrigerated cabinet. Then bring all the parts to the sink area. Now you're ready to begin the final step in our closing procedure, washing and sanitizing. Fill one sink with water and cleaning solution, and another sink with water and McD sanitizer detergent solution. First, disassemble all the parts, making sure you keep the plastic and metal parts separate so no damage will be done to the plastic parts. To properly wash and sanitize the parts, you must remove all the O-rings. Use a towel to grasp the O-ring and apply upward pressure until it pops out of the groove. With the other hand, push the top of the O-ring forward so it rolls out of the groove and off the part. Remember, if there is more than one O-ring on a part, always remove the rear one first. This will prevent the O-ring from falling into another empty groove. Taking the pump apart is one of the most critical steps. To start, first pull the pressure head straight out from the bottom of the pump. Then push the pump piston through and out the bottom. Be sure to remove the orifice. Then all the O-rings and rubber check bands from the piston and the pressure head. Now for washing. First, spray all the parts with hot water and place them in the cleaning solution to soak. Next, wash, rinse, and sanitize the part trays. Then wash the parts using the proper brush. Next, rinse them again with a spray of hot water. Then sanitize the parts in the McD sanitizer detergent. Proper sanitizing is very important. Otherwise, you might end up serving a contaminated product. Place all the sanitized parts on the part trays and allow them to air dry overnight. As we said in the beginning, the direct draw shake machine is more sophisticated than most of our other equipment. But the procedures you've just been through will soon become a quick routine and they'll make your job easier.